My name is Joseph Jacob. I am excited to welcome you to Secrets of Public Speaking. Today we'll focus on the body of our speech. We have repeatedly said in our previous videos that the body is arguably the most important part of our speech. The reason is because it is in the body that the message of our speech is contained. So the body is very, very important. By now, you must have outlined the points you are going to present in your speech. But outlining the points are not enough. For example, in writing, in paragraph development, we have what is called the topic sentence. The topic sentence is the message you want to pass in the paragraph. But the topic sentence alone does not make a paragraph. There must be other sentences that will be joined to the topic sentence to clarify the topic sentence more and thereby making a complete paragraph. The same thing applies to public speaking. When you've stated your points, they are not enough. Your points must be well expantiated so that they will convince the audience and the audience will be willing to act based on those points they've understood. Therefore, this video is going to answer two important questions. The first one is, how do we develop our points? The second one is, how do we arrange these points in the body of our speech? Let's start with the first one. How do we develop our points? There are three ways we'll consider now that we'll use to develop our points. The first one is example. A very good example is one of the simplest way to help the audience understand our points very well. But in using examples, there are some basic things you need to bear in mind. One, a good example is not spontaneous. What I mean by this is that it is not while you are presenting your speech that you will come up with a good example. For example, to be good, you need to sit down, think over it, remove the unnecessary parts, and add the other parts that are necessary, for example, to reach the heart of your audience. The second thing you must bear in mind about examples is that you must be careful not to use an example that will offend your audience. In one of our previous videos, we said that you need to analyze your audience. You need to ask important questions about your audience. The answers you get from these questions will help you to know what examples will offend your audience and avoid those ones. For example, if you are delivering your speech in a community where a majority of people frown at the use of alcohol, is it proper? for you to go to such a place and while delivering a speech, you give an exa example that um, justifies the use of alcohol. How do you think your audience will feel? Definitely, they will not be happy with you. So you must sit down and arrange your examples very well so that it will not offend your audience. Another thing you need to know about examples is that the aim of using example is to clarify the main point, which means an example must be simple. If example needs another example to clarify it, then it is not a good example. Therefore, your example must be very simple to understand so that it will not be complicated. And for you to use a simple example, you still need to go back to that audience analysis. For example, if you are delivering a speech where your audience are farmers, most of them not having basic formal education, should you go there and start making examples with rockets? satellite, submarines, definitely they will not understand what you are talking about. You will use little simple examples that your audience will understand and that is what will help to make your example very very useful to your audience. The second way you can expand your point is to use statistics. Figures can be very helpful to understand certain points and to help the audience to appreciate what you want them to bear in mind. Well, in using statistics as well, there are basic things you need to bear in mind. One, you need to make sure that the source of your statistics is reliable. 
a reliable source is a source that has over the years proven to be reliable. So don't go to the internet and get whatever thing you find there as statistics. They may not be reliable. The second thing you need to bear in mind is that your statistics must be current. If you are speaking in 2021, it is definitely wrong for you to go and get the statistics of 1990. Definitely, such statistics is outdated. It will not give you the current position of things. So you must look for a current statistics. Secondly, you must be mindful of the information you get from the news media. They are not always reliable. August von Kloser, a German historian, once said, Foolish is the man who never reads a newspaper. Even more foolish is the one who believes what he reads simply because it is in the newspaper. So it's very obvious that when we get information from the media, we must check and cross-check to make sure that that information is reliable before we use it in our speech. Another thing you need to know about statistics is that it is best to round off the figures. For instance, if you say a figure like 3 billion, 981 million, 583,254. How many in your audience will remember this figure after two minutes? Definitely most of them will forget it. If you round it off by saying about 3 billion, close to 4 billion, more than 3 billion, such figures can be remembered because they are simplified. So it's better you use such rounded off figures in statistics, they'll be have very helpful. Lastly, there are words that have to do with figures. Words like most, few. Be careful the way you use them. For example, in a school that has 2,000 students, only 10 students engage in examination malpractice. Is it correct when someone now say most of the students in the school engage in examination malpractice. You see it's wrong because it's only 10 of 2,000. So make sure when you are using those words, you are using them correctly. When you say more, when you say most, when you say few, make sure they are really representing the figures truly. Let's progress to the third way you can expand your points. And that is the use of expert analysis. Sometimes engineers, doctors, lawyers, architects, and financial experts do give their views in reputable magazines. You can get their views from these reputable magazines and use them to expand your points. Now that we have known how to expand our points, the next thing is how do we present it? In what format do we present these points? Which points come first? Which points should come second? and which point should come last. Well, let's look at four ways that you can use to determine how you present the points in your speech. The first one is chronological order. In terms of chronological order, we means presenting your points as they happen in time, from the farthest to the nearest, from the past to the present. That is presenting your speech in chronological order. For example, if you are giving a speech on political developments in West Africa, you may choose to start from pre-colonial times to the colonial times, then to the post-colonial era, and then to the present time. Doing so is very simple, both for you as the speaker and for the audience, because humans easily relate to time and the relationship between the past and the present. However, in using this chronological order, it's important that your audience know the relationship between the times. For example, if an event happened in 1910, and you want to state another event that happened in 1930, you can simply say 20 years later. Knowing the passage of time will help your audience to understand what you are saying. Another way you can arrange your points is in the cause and effect order. The theme you are discussing, you first of all present the cause, what it has cost. And then you now present what this cause, how it has affected the audience. 
This will also help the audience to understand what you are talking about. Another way you can arrange your speech is by using the problem solution format. You first of all mention the problems you are discussing and then you give the solutions. You know, people don't like problems. So this format is very enticing because it helps them to see how they can solve the problems confronting them. The last format we'll give you is the topical or subtopical format. In this case, you break down your speech into different subtopics. This helps the audience to follow you subtopic by subtopic. For instance, if you are delivering your speech on malaria, you can first of all define what malaria is as a subtopic definition. From definition, you now go to the causes of malaria. From the causes, you go to the symptoms. From the symptoms, you go to the diagnosis. From the diagnosis, you go to the treatment. From the treatment, you can also talk about complications and ways to prevent malaria. So when your speech has these different subtopics, it makes it easier for you to present and easier for your audience to follow and understand your speech very, very well. In today's video, we've answered two important questions. The first one we answered is, how do we expand our points? We've, we saw three ways we can do that. The first one is to use examples, very good examples indeed. The second one is to use statistics. And the last one is to use expert analysis or experts' opinions. We also answered the question, how do we now arrange our point? In what format do we present our point in the body of our speech? We looked at four ways. First is the chronological order. Second is the cause and effect order. And the third is the problem and solution order. And we also looked at the subtopical order. Thanks for watching this video. In our next video, we'll now go to conclusion. How can we effectively conclude our speech? That will be the focus of our next video. Have a nice day.